I'm sure that we have all heard those stories of mothers in an adrenaline-filled state being able to lift up cars because their kids are trapped underneath them. In fact, there was a man named Jack Kirby who witnessed such an event, and that inspired him to go on and create the big green superhero we know as the Hulk. Really? Yeah. When it comes to somebody's child, most parents would stop at nothing to try to save them. And Don't mess with my baby. Exactly. And what we see in the Bible is no different. Whether that be the story of the woman in front of King Solomon who was willing to give up her baby in order to save him, or Moses' mother who, in order to save Moses from being killed by Pharaoh, hides him away in the Nile. Talking about Moses, today we're actually going to talk about Moses' wife and how she joins the ranks of these women in doing an incredible, uh, an incredible feat in order to save her son. Today on Yes, That Is Something That Happened in the Bible, we talk about the time where a mother, in order to save her son, circumcised him and then touched her husband's feet with the skin she just cut off. Let's begin. So here's the scene. Moses is on his way down to Egypt to tell Pharaoh, Let my people go. This is right after the story of God showing up to talk to Moses in the form of a burning bush. So Moses and his family are on their way to Egypt and they stop at this inn to rest. And while they're there at the inn, God shows up. But this time, not to talk to Moses, but to kill him. You might be wondering... Wait, what? That. Why is God showing up to kill Moses? Didn't he just spend a bunch of time trying to convince Moses to go to Egypt? Well... We'll talk about that in a second. So Moses is either asleep or something's happening to him because it's not him who acts or reacts to God showing up, but his wife, Zipporah. And she does what any person would do in that kind of a situation. She goes, grabs a flint knife, and circumcises her son. You know, totally normal. And that brings us to our key verse today. It is Exodus 4, verse 25. It says this, Then Zipporah took a flint, and cut off her son's foreskin, and touched Moses' feet with it, and said, Surely you are a bridegroom of blood to me. Let's break this down. So gross. Yes, it's very gross. And if you're also wondering what the heck's going on, don't worry, you're in good company. You see, this short story, even though it's only three verses long, has actually been a source of confusion for a lot of translators. And one of the main reasons that is, is that uh, in the Hebrew, it just uses the pronoun him throughout the whole story. And the way that it uses him, it's not clear whether that him is Moses or the son. It seems the reason why God's showing up to do this is because Moses hasn't circumcised his son yet. And you might be wondering why that's a big deal. Well, circumcision was the main key physical sign that you were a follower of Yahweh. And Moses, for some reason hasn't done that yet with his son. He has, basically, he's disobeying God. And it seems what's happening is that God's showing Moses that just because he chose him doesn't give him some kind of free pass to not obey his commands. And while that seems to be the overarching, like, takeaway from the story, there's some really interesting details that we need to discuss. First, we need to answer the question, how did Zipporah know to circumcise her son? Now, the most simple and logical explanation would be that, well, Moses and Zipporah have probably talked about circumcision. They might have already been planning to circumcise their son and just haven't done it yet. And so when God shows up, her, just, her knowledge of Hebrew traditions just kind of kicks in and she knows, oh, I need to circumcise my son. That's what this is all about. And while that's the like simple and most likely explanation, it's not the fun explanation. To get the fun explanation, we need to look at a medieval rabbi named Rashim. And on his commentary on this passage, he gives a different reason for why Zipporah knew to circumcise her son. Essentially, what he says happened was that God did show up to attack Moses, but he sent an angel to do it. And the angel came, not in the form of a man, but in the form of a giant snake. And this giant snake shows up and it eats Moses, starting with his head, and it goes down to his waist and then spits Moses back up. And then it eats Moses again, but this time from his feet up to his waist and then spits him back up. 
And Zipporah is watching this whole thing and she realizes there's only one part of Moses' body that the snake did not swallow. That's right. You guessed it. His genitals. Oh. <laughs> and that was the clue she needed to go circumcise their son. Another detail that we should discuss is the whole bridegroom of blood phrase that she says. She's saying that because she married Moses, the consequences of her marrying Moses is that she had to circumcise her son. There had to be blood spilt. But again, there's some interesting translation issues when it comes to bridegroom of blood. We have to go back to the whole pronoun issue because even though in the ESV translation that I read earlier, it says that she touched Moses' feet, in the Hebrew it just says she touched his feet. And so you could interpret it both Moses or the son. So if she is touching the son's feet with his own foreskin, then it doesn't make sense for her to say, you are now a bridegroom of blood to me. That might be a mistranslation. And this also introduces another fun aspect of Hebrew, is that words can have multiple meanings. So while the word for bridegroom does mean bridegroom, it could also be translated as kinsman. So if she was touching her son's feet, she could be saying, you have become a kinsman of blood. Kind of like saying that because blood had to be spilt so that you could join the followers of Yahweh. One last fun Hebrew translation issue also with all of this is that apparently in Hebrew, the word feet can be a euphemism for, you guessed it, genitals. What? So with all that said, let me retell the story with uh, all the possibilities of what could be going on. So we have Moses and his family show up at the inn, and God or an angel shows up to either kill Moses or the son. Moses is either being attacked or something's happening, so Zipporah is the one that reacts. And because of her knowledge of Hebrew traditions, or because some kind of divine snake is chewing on her husband's body except for his special place, she goes and <laughs> circumcises her son and takes the foreskin and touches either her husband's feet or her husband's genitals with it, or her son's feet or her son's genitals with it. And because of all of that, God lets them live. As you can see, it's a super simple story. The end. I feel like all you did was cause more confusion. <laughs> that's not that's not the point. No. But. The yes, it, it is a confusing story, but what are some things that we can take away from it? What are some applications we can see from the story for today? Well, three things. First, it shows that just because you're a Christian or a follower of God doesn't give you some free pass not to obey God. You still need to love people and love God. Second, just as your actions have consequences, inaction can also have consequences as well. And third, you should always keep a sharp knife ready because you never know when you're gonna have to perform an emergency circumcision. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much again for watching these videos. If you haven't yet, please uh, subscribe to the channel, give this video a like. We are almost to 100 subscribers and it would just be such an encouragement to see that number be reached. If you would like to watch another story about uh, circumcision, well, I started this whole channel talking about one of those stories, so you can click on the video over here to watch that. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you next time.